So guys, today I'm going to show you how to get some really nice flying theater screens that are high quality and fully immersive inside Planet Coaster 2. So let's do it. So first of all, Planet Coaster 2 actually gives you some pretty epic screens already. And they're nice. They, they check off the boxes of a simple flying theater. But, you know, the problem is that they're really bad quality. They're very, very stretched and just compressed as hell. So let's fix it. To fix the stretching, we need to identify whether that is baked into the video or if the ride itself is stretching the footage after the fact. So to tell that, I have imported a checkerboard into my user media folder. And this image has perfect squares. You know, it's just a standard checkerboard. And the current aspect ratio of it is your standard 16 by nine or 1920 by 1080p. That's gonna be important later if we find out that it is in fact getting stretched by the ride. So if I go ahead and select my checkerboard 178, that's 178 because the aspect ratio is 1.78 by one. And if I go to test, you will see that it is in fact getting stretched. So how do we avoid this? Well, we need to calculate the exact amount of stretching. And we're gonna need to do some complex math for this. Two, three, four, five out of 6.5. 5.5 divided by 6.5 plus one, and that's not the f So it turns out that the squares of the checkerboard is actually getting stretched about 1.85 squares wide. That perfect square that we once had is now 1.85 squares wide. So what we need to do is multiply the top number in our resolution by that 1.85 squares that it's getting stretched by to get the resolution that will not be stretched. And that number is 3544. So our resolution will need to be 3544 by 1080 or 3.28 by one. And to test this out, I rendered another checkerboard with this new resolution and did it work? Yes. We now have perfect squares on our screen. So again, if we want to eliminate the stretching in our theater screens, we need to be using the super wide screen ratio of 3.28 by one. The two flying theaters that I've actually been on are Soren at Epcot and Avatar Flight of Passage at Animal Kingdom. And both of these rides are fantastic and they both tell a unique story. Whether, you know, it's flying on a banshee around Pandora or just soaring around the world. So storytelling is something that we really want to keep in mind when we're creating our own screens. Now, obviously, one of these rides required months and months, maybe years of CGI work, rendering, animating to get that really cool planet of Pandora filled with life. And the other is primarily drone shots with clever transitions. So clearly one is going to be easier to recreate. Now there are a few methods you can use to get drone shots to use in your screens. You could go down the stock footage route and use some royalty free footage that you find online. One of my favorite websites is pexels.com. It has tons of royalty free footage. Lots of them are drone shots. You can type in drone shots beach. You can find plenty of results that you could potentially use in your screens. Another option could be Google Earth Studio. This website lets you go around Google's 3D scans of the entire Earth and animate a camera. So this gives you the ultimate freedom, but the quality is questionable. Now, keeping with the Planet Coaster theme, you could fly around and screen record in Planet Coaster. And I decided to get my drone shots and some cool creator parks that I found on the workshop. And I just use an Xbox controller to get these really smooth camera moves. A combination of the Xbox controller and my mouse and keyboard. Regardless of what you use, the footage needs to be put together with some clever edits. And we also need to convert this into the proper aspect ratio. Now, this is not an editing tutorial by any means. I use Premiere Pro, but all of these concepts can be applied to any editing software. Just look up tutorials for the specific things that you need to do. But I will show you what I did and what I learned along the way. So to start, 
I just threw all my clips in the timeline and cut them the way I liked. And I added this nice Luma fade transition in between everything. And these clips were also recorded with transitions in mind. Like this first clip ends with lots of trees in the shot, and the second one starts with trees. Next, I synced these edits with a song that I chose. This one is The Magic of Moments from the Planet Coaster soundtrack. Nice. Now, regarding that resolution that we calculated earlier, I have my sequence set up in that 3544 by 1080 resolution. And I scale the footage a little bit, but it's still way too small. So to fix that, we can use a lens distortion. We want the center of the screen to not be distorted, but the edges are the peripheral vision. So it would make sense if that part were a little distorted. And by using a lens distortion effect on an adjustment layer, we can get that result perfectly. The center stays intact, while the edges are the ones that stretch. So now let's talk about the limitations of Planet Coaster. In the Flying Theater ride, the music starts immediately, whereas the video starts about 15 seconds later, once the seats are fully lifted. So it's helpful to have the video fade in or start it a night shot, so it's not as bright of a flash. And for this reason, I'd recommend rendering the music separately from the video, so it plays for the entire duration. To prevent the video from restarting at the end of the sequence, Render an extra second or two of black so it doesn't accidentally start to loop. Next, Planet Coaster 2 only accepts the WebM format for videos, and that format is designed to be as compressed as possible. So getting high quality results is a major challenge. To skip through the hours of testing that I did, these are the settings that work best for me. Things like 30 FPS instead of 60 for the rendering. Check the Use Max Render Quality box. Set the time interpolation as optical flow. Use the constant quality. And I found that setting the quality slider to anything above 50 or 60 risks the video playing super choppy in the game. Lastly, render times take forever with this WebM format. And not only is clicking the Send to Media Encoder box faster, but it also gave me higher quality results in the end. Once you have everything rendered, drop the files into the user audio and user media folders. And inside Planet Coaster, press refresh and link them to the ride. For a little bit more control over the volume and timing, I use speakers that I connect to the trigger sequence. Remember, if you do this, the trigger will only play if there's another triggerable object in the group, like a light. So make sure you add that. Once everything is put together, we're ready to test. 